Dividing radicals. Radicals are simplified when the following is true. The radical contains no perfect square factors. So you have factored the radical. And you've pulled out any matching pairs. The radicand, which is the square root symbol, has no fractions under it, so you cannot have oops, can't have like say for example the square root of one half, and there are no radicals in the denominator, so we can't have something like this. Okay. There's a quotient property. radicals. Just like we had the product proper, we have a quotient property, and quotients are division. Okay, and the quotient property tells us that the square root of a over b is the same as the square root of a over the square root of b. And we can go the other way. If we start with the square root of a over the square root of b, that is the same thing as the square root of a over b. And we can use that to help us simplify our radicals. So let's start with a fraction underneath a radical. We're going to reduce the fraction first. 4 and 20 both divide by 4, and that gives me the square root of 1 fifth. Then we're going to simplify the radicals. Now to do that, I am going to split this to the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. The square root of 1 is a perfect square, so that is 1, and the square root of 5 can't be simplified. Next, I'm going to do a process called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, Rationalizing the denominator is how we get rid of the square root in the denominator. To do this, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the denominator, or by something called a conjugate, and we'll discuss those in a minute. For right now, we're going to do by the denominator. So I have 1 over the square root of 5. Since I can't have the square root of 5 in the denominator, I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 5. This gives me the square root of 5 over, if I take the square root of 5 times itself, what I'm actually doing is I'm taking the square root of 5 squared and squared and the square root cancel each other out. So whenever you multiply a radical by itself, the radical goes away. Now here's really important, you cannot reduce inside and outside of a radical. So this 5 is under a radical and this 5 is not, so this does not reduce. This is my final, most simplified answer. Let's try some more examples. Um, if I have perfect squares under the radicals, I just take the square roots of each, and that's done. If I have non-perfect squares, again, I'm going to reduce them first. So I'll put them together into one fraction. 15 and 12 both divide by 3, so that gives me 5 over 4. And then I'm going to simplify each. The square root of 5 doesn't simplify. The square root of 4 is 2, and this one is complete. I did not have to rationalize the denominator. Now here's another type. If I have the square root of 4 over 4 times the square root of 5. Now, I can't simplify it yet, but once I 
simplify the, I'm sorry, I can't reduce it yet, but once I simplify this 4, that becomes a 2. Now I could reduce it and I get 1 over 2 times the square root of 5 because these both divide by 2. Now I need to get rid of this square root of 5. And that's going to give me the square root of 5 over 2 times 5 because this 2 didn't go away. And this square root of 5 times the square root of 5 gives me a 5. So I get the square root of 5 over 10. And again, this cannot reduce because this 5 is under the radical and this 5 or this 10 is not. If I have a problem such as this and multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 5, I will get 4 times the square root of 10 because this square root of 5 and the square root of 2 multiply together, and then that's over 3 times 5. So I get 4 times the square root of 10 over 15. Now we want to make sure that we can't simplify the 10 any further, so we'll make a factor tree and we can see there's no perfect square hiding in there, so this is our final answer. Sometimes we have addition or subtraction in the numerator. And when that happens, we still do the same process, except we're going to be distributing in the numerator. Okay. Now, I can't reduce these threes because of this subtraction. If this was a multiplication, I could, but right now I cannot. So what I need to do is I need to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 17. And this square root of 17 is going to multiply times this negative 3 and times this negative square root of 2. That's going to give me negative 3 times the square root of 17 minus the square root of 2 times 17. All over 3 times 17. So that gives me negative 3 times the square root of 17 minus the square root of 34. Four. Just double check that. Yes, the square root of 34 all over the square root of, or sorry, 51. Now, I'm going to check to see if this 34 can be reduced. Well, it's 2 times 17. 17 is prime, so no, that, that cannot be reduced. So my next step is to reduce this portion of the fraction. In order to do that, I take that negative 3 times the square root of 17 and I put that over 51 minus the square root of 34 over 51. I have to split it in half. And the reason I'm doing this is because 3 and 51 will reduce. So I get negative the square root of 17 over 51 divided by 3 is 17 minus the square root of 34 over 51. And that is completely simplified. Let's try another one of those. I'll have the square root of 3 plus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2 times the square root of 8. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom times the square root of 8. You'll notice I'm not multiplying by the 2, just the radical. That gets multiplied by each of these, giving me the square root of 3 times 8 plus 3 times the square root of 5 times 8 over 2 times 8, because the radicals canceled. So that is the square root of 24 plus 3 times the square root of 40 over 16. Now, 24 and 40 both have perfect squares hiding in them. Here I have a perfect square 2. So this is going to be 2 times the square root of 6 plus, and then that 40 
is 5 times 8, which is 2 times 4. So there's that perfect square 4. So 2 times the square root of 10 all over 16. Now in this instance, all three of these will reduce by 2. So I don't have to split it if I don't want to. I can write it together. I divide everything here by 2. Now again, I'm not going inside the radicals. I'm staying outside of the radicals. And that gives me the square root of 6 plus the square root of 10 over 8. Now while 6, 10, and 8 all do also divide by 2 because these are under the radical, I cannot reduce this any further. Sometimes when you have addition and subtraction in the numerator, or sorry, in the denominator, This is when we have to multiply by what's called the conjugate. Okay, now here's what a conjugate is. If I have x plus 2, the conjugate is x minus 2. If I have 3 minus x, the conjugate is 3 plus x. So conjugates have the opposite operation of addition and subtraction. When I'm talking about radicals, if I have 3 plus the square root of 5, the conjugate would be 3 minus the square root of 5. If I have the square root of 2, plus the square root of 6, the conjugate would be the square root of 2 minus the square root of 6. Now an interesting happen, thing happens when we multiply conjugates. So let's look at our x plus 2 and our x minus 2. When I multiply these, if I FOIL them out, I get x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 4. These middle terms cancel. If I multiply conjugates with radicals, I get square root of 2 times square root of 2, so that's 2. And then I have square root of 2 times the square root of 6, so that's minus, well, plus the square root of 12, minus the square root of 12, and then minus 6. These cancel. So I end up with 2 minus 6, which is 4. So conjugates allow us to eliminate the radicals. So, for example, if I have a problem, the square root of 3 over 1 minus the square root of 5, I want to get rid of that radical in the denominator. Well, if I only multiply by the square root of 5, I have 1 times the square root of 5, so there's still a square root. So I have to multiply by the conjugate. So I multiply by 1 plus the square root of 5. Okay. Now, what this ends up giving me is the square root of 3 times 1 plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 in the numerator. and a foiling binomial situation in the denominator. So I get the square root of 3 plus the square root of 15. Now, you don't have to completely FOIL this out. You can multiply the first terms, and you can multiply the second terms, because those middle terms that you get when you're doing FOIL will cancel. So I'm going to have 1 times 1, which is 1, and negative the square root of 5 times positive the square root of 5, which gives me minus 5. Now, if you do want to FOIL it out, you get 1 minus the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5 minus 5, and these will cancel. So I'll have the square root of 3 plus the square root of 15 all over negative 4, but we don't leave negatives in the denominator either. This needs to come up front. So I have negative the square root of 3 minus the square root of 15. I have to change both of those signs over 4. Or if you want, you can keep the negative out front. 
but you have to put these in parentheses. So let's try another one of those. Let's try the square root of 5, sorry, just 5, over 5 plus the square root of 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, and the conjugate is 5 minus the square root of 2 over 5 minus the square root of 2. So this 5 gets multiplied by each of these, giving me 25 minus 5 times the square root of 2. And then first terms, 5 times 5 is 25. Second terms, minus 2. So I get 25 minus 5 times the square root of 2 over 23. Now this is not going to reduce, so that's my final answer. Sometimes you end up with a situation where you have addition and subtraction in both the numerator and the denominator. And in this case, you still just multiply by the conjugate. It's just that you're going to have a foiling in both the numerator and the denominator. Now, the sign that you change is only ever this middle sign. You don't change the sign on the first term. So I'm going to foil each of these. So I'll just rewrite this down here. So I'm going to do first, then outside, then inside, and then last. So first gives me negative 4. Outside gives me 2 times the square root of 5. Inside gives me 2 times the square root of 3. I've got my plus. Because it's a negative times a negative. And then last gives me minus the square root of 15. Now for my denominator, I have negative 2 minus the square root of 5 times negative 2 plus the square root of 5. And again, on these, I only have to do the first and the last. I can keep out the other two because they'll just cancel. So I have 4 minus 5. So this gives me negative 4 plus 2 times the square root of 5 plus 2 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 15 all over negative 1. And if I divide by negative 1, I change all of the signs. And none of these are like terms or can be simplified any further. So this is our final answer. Let's just try one more of those. Okay, and this one has radicals with coefficients. So I still need to multiply by the conjugate. So I'm going to FOIL. So I have first, that gives me negative 4. Outside gives me 8 times the square root of 5. Inside gives me minus 3 times the square root of 2. And then last gives me 6 times the square root of 10. Then my denominator, I have negative 1 times negative 1, and then negative, that should be a positive, sorry. Negative 2 times positive 2 gives me a negative 4. And then the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. So this gives me negative 4 plus 8 radical 5 minus 3 radical 2 plus 6 radical 10 all over 1 minus 20. So negative 4 plus 8 radical 5 minus 3 radical 2 plus 6 radical 10 all over negative 19. But we don't want to keep that negative in the denominator. So I'm going to change all of the signs in the numerator. And make that 19 positive.
Now, so far we've done with just numbers, but sometimes you do end up with a situation where you have variables in your radicals. So let's take, for example, 3 over the square root of 5x minus 3. Okay. Now, even though this radical is in front, you still multiply by the conjugate, always the conjugate. So multiplying this, I'm going to have 3 times the square root of 5x plus 3 times 3, which is 9, over 5x minus 9. Now, this is not reducible because even though there's a 3, a 9, and a 9, I cannot divide all of these by 3 because this 5x does not divide by 3. These not factorable. This is technically factorable, but it doesn't really do us any good to factor it, so we can leave it exactly like it is. 